Once you've reached a relic or data site, it's time to start breaking open those containers for the valuable loot within. Approach a container, lock it up, and activate the relevant module. A relic analyzer for relic sites, or a data analyzer for data sites. When you activate a relic or data analyzer, the hacking screen will open. From here, you need to successfully break the lock in order to open the vault and access the loot within. But note, failing twice will cause the container to explode, taking all of the valuables inside with it. Your goal is to locate and destroy the system core, which is hidden somewhere in the network. Clicking the explorable blue nodes will allow you to proceed to adjacent nodes. However, be warned. Defensive subsystems will be found scattered throughout the network, which will attempt to block your path. You will need to overcome or bypass these security systems in order to reach the core. You may also find utility subsystems, which you can use to get an advantage, as well as data caches, which may contain either helpful utilities or dangerous defences. In the lower left-hand corner of the window, you'll also see two bars for coherence and strength. Coherence can be thought of as your health, while strength represents the damage you do when attacking a node. As you attack defensive subsystems or the system core, you'll take damage to your coherence while damaging the coherence of the node you're attacking. If you reduce the coherence of a defensive subsystem to zero, it will disappear. However, if your own coherence falls to zero, you will fail the hack and be kicked from the network. There are four types of defensive subsystems you may encounter while hacking. Firewalls, which have high coherence but low strength. Antivirus, which have low coherence but high strength. Restoration nodes, which heal random defensive subsystems on the network each turn. And virus suppressors, which weaken your strength while active. You generally want to avoid attacking as much as possible until these have been removed from the network. It's generally a good idea to explore further before directly attacking a defensive subsystem, as you may uncover additional helpful utility subsystems, which you can use to overcome them, or even the exposed core if you're lucky. However, due to the disruptive effects of restoration and suppressor nodes, you will want to destroy these immediately. The difficulty of a hacking site is generally determined by the security status of the space you're in. More difficult hacking sites require better equipment, skills and execution, but can be much more lucrative. In harder sites, defensive nodes will take and deal more coherence damage before being removed. The dangerous restoration and suppressor subsystems are also only found in more difficult sites, so you don't need to worry about them just yet if you're starting off exploring in high security space. As you explore a network, you may also discover helpful utility subsystems along the way. These are tools you can use to gain an advantage in overcoming defensive subsystems and increase your odds of success. The utility subsystems you may encounter are self-repair, which gradually increases your coherence over each turn. You'll want to use these immediately, as there is no maximum coherence value. Kernel rots, which cut the system's coherence in half. Use these to break through high coherence systems such as firewalls. Polymorphic shields, which nullify the next two attacks against you, preventing you from losing coherence. Use this before attacking high-strength systems, such as an antivirus. And secondary vectors, which reduce a system's coherence over time. You'll want to use these to augment attacks against key targets, particularly to wear down suppressor nodes while your virus strength is reduced, without having to attack them directly. As you explore, you may also uncover data caches, they may either contain a helpful utility subsystem or a dangerous defensive one. Because there's no way to know what a data cache contains before opening it, it's generally recommended to only open these as a last resort, when you might otherwise fail without a utility subsystem to give you a needed edge. You now know the basics of the hacking process. Click through the network, revealing nodes as you go, and try to find and destroy the system core without letting the defensive subsystems destroy you first. Here you can see we're exploring the network and find that we've hit a firewall. We continue exploring before attacking it, finding a repair which we can use immediately to gain extra coherence. Then, once other routes have turned up empty, we attack the firewall, overcoming it and revealing the system core behind it. We attack the system core and voila, we've beaten the hack and can now access the container for the valuable loot within. While exploring, you will notice a number appear briefly as you reveal a node. 
This number indicates the distance to the nearest system core, utility subsystem or data cache. You can use these to guide you in a potentially useful direction as you explore the network. For example, we can see that this 5 indicates that the core won't be found within 5 nodes of this one, so we should probably continue exploring over to another area of the board. Here we can see that we have a 1, which indicates that there is something potentially interesting nearby. By exploring the surrounding nodes, we find the system core, which we can then successfully destroy and beat the hack. For an extra edge, there's a more advanced technique you can practice while hacking, which is referred to as the Rule of Six. The Rule of Six simply states that if a node is surrounded by six connecting nodes, then it either contains no defensive subsystem or is adjacent to the system core. This means that if you aim for these central nodes, you're less likely to encounter defensive subsystems and, if you do, you know that the core is nearby so you don't waste too much time fighting with unnecessary defensive subsystems elsewhere. Trying to reveal these nodes first is a good tactic to improve your chances of a successful hack. The loot contained within relic and data containers can be sold on the market for profit, which you can then use to upgrade your ship and equipment. The loot from relic and data sites is always in demand from industrialists who are trying to use it. The loot from relic sites is salvage, used in the production of ship rigs, and the loot from data sites is generally used for the purposes of inventing T2 blueprints. Now that you understand the basics of hacking, go out there, break open some relic and data containers, and start filling your cargo with the sweet loot found within.